story courtesy of sky news bbc the new york times like these mad mad headlines right let me get if i can get up on here for you bear with me one second yeah there we go cool so look at this look at this headline so this is courtesy of the new york times it says covid19 devastates india deaths go unaccounted for and if you're just watch listening to this on the screen there's like a drone shot of what looks like makeshift more well makeshift uh, crematoriums basically where they are unfortunately having to lay the rest uh lay down um those who passed away due to complications with covid because i guess um hospitals and stuff are being completely overrun and there's no room for some of these people to be laid to rest um you've got obviously that headline that picture looks insane and you've got this headline for the bbc it says india covid delhi builds a makeshift funeral priors as death um climbs right crazy line uh, headline and then you got another one india india's crematoriums under reporting bodies as suspicion grows over the true number of coronavirus deaths so an absolute shit show of a situation going over there then you've got these clips from business techno or business techno of a whole plethora plethora a whole host an absolute um you know uh gaggle a uh, you know rowdy bunch of djs who have all kind of flown over to india and in, you know the last few weeks and months and stuff to play gigs and again i i have i've kind of gone back and forth on my view on clay graves and stuff and generally i don't really care now especially when it concerns people who probably should know better governments who are clearly trying to you know put their citizens life in danger in order to line their own pockets i don't have i don't really have anything to say to all that sort of stuff and most of it especially when it's occurring in countries that you know i have no business you know inputting any of my views and opinions on how they should run their country on and i won't really be an effector of change in any meaningful way in that respect but you can't help but feel like are these guys do these feel guys these guys feel any levels of complicity when they see those sort of headlines and they were playing in india just a few weeks ago is there anything that in those guys minds that let them think that hey i feel really guilty about doing this because you know people are legitimately having to you know dig up a little ditch somewhere and light a few sticks on top of their grandma that just passed away because they can't give her a dig dignified sort of you know send-off because we're living in the peakest of times and here's a clip, I guess, of um, Adana Twins, Agents of Time, and, and him playing somewhere in India that somebody uploaded onto the Business Techno site or Twitter profile. <laughs> The one thing to be fair about these videos, this is the first one I've seen so far of a playground where people are actually dancing and it looks like they're having fun. The first one I've seen. Most of the ones I've seen are usually, it looks like, especially the ones in Tulum and stuff, it looks like a bunch of rich people have basically decided to all kind of get away from, you know, the mess of the real world and kind of inoculate themselves in Tulum. And they basically throw parties for each other and hire some equipment or maybe go play in clubs. But it looks like the same type of people hanging around each other in those kind of spaces, which is, you know, is what it is. You can't choose your friends or you can, depending if you're trying to, you know, climb yourself up in, the, you know, the career ladder. But this is the first one I've seen so far where people are actually dancing, you know, hands in the air, whistling, making noises and shit. The first one I've seen. Let's fast forward a bit here. Still playing this shit. And then you got a video here of Art Bat, Black Coffee, and Charlotte the Whip playing in the same place. You got a picture of, of course, a video of Deborah DeLuca playing her terrible brand of techno, or whatever that bullshit she plays. Um, and then you've got another video of Dixon saying what to people again. I, I love Dixon, one of my favorite DJs of all time, but this is. Oh, a bad look, my friend. What does it say here? 2021. So we see us again. Together we dance alone. <laughs> yeah, we probably dance together a lot. Yeah. Well, I don't know, brother. Uh, you got another one. You got a video of Jamie Jones and Lehar playing somewhere. I guess everyone's got to feed their family. But yeah, man, I don't know. I wonder if they feel any sort of level of complicity in it. I know I get it. Again, most of this is odd and complex to talk about because some of these people, 
you know, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable telling anybody where, how much money they should be earning, whether or not they should go out and, you know, go out and earn a living. You know, that's not my place at all. And I'm sure some people would argue that it doesn't matter what I earn. I have a right to earn a living. You know, I've worked really hard for this career. I'm going to go get it. And then I'm sure some people are also in a position where they're living in a country where their government hasn't necessarily handled COVID, you know, in a very, um, um, you know, good way to enable the economy to get back to any semblance of normality. So they're essentially on their hands and knees hoping for a miracle and then the miracle comes via their inbox with their agent or booking manager telling them hey i've got a residency for you here in the middle of flipping you know wherever new delhi or something then you're going to run at the opportunity especially if you've been you know signing on for the past six months and stuff the, the last thing you want to the first thing you want to do is go out there and earn a living doing the thing you legitimately love to do anyone would probably take the opportunity to do so so sometimes i feel like some of the criticism feels a little bit disingenuous because it's basically coming from people who were never offered the chance to play in the middle of india during a global pandemic for flipping thirty thousand pound or whatever they get paid if you were getting paid that much you probably would go to it's like i remember that was why i had a whole aversion to the whole you know remember that whole feature with resident advisor concerning i think it was either seth shocks or jamie jones but something about workload right and burnout and how many gigs they were doing and i remember that being a thing there was a thing back in the day where people would kind of wear with pride how many listings and dates they were basically playing at on their ra because basically ra is similar to like a dj imbd so you'd have like a list of all the past things that you've done and people would wear it with pride and say hey i'm the one playing 400 shows per year and then dixon will come out and say i only do 120 because i want to see my family right everyone's got their thing that they did but i remember the numbers being a really really big deal um so you can understand why those same people who are quite type a and would be willing to you know not see their family for six weeks on end um, would be also be the first ones to jump on a plane to a third world country in order to go and play for other people because you know they can't face the internal damnation of their own homes or something but i don't know who knows maybe it's not that serious maybe it's just you know, you've got to earn a living but i wonder if with all these news of these outdoor crematoriums whether or not some of these djs feel guilty probably not i'm assuming because hey you got to earn a living somehow and they could argue that you know people die every day but it's a wild place to be alive it's a wild time to be alive not wild place it's a wild time to be alive it really really is 